you know, I was just wondering, what was your process like to really get into the head of this hairdresser for this role? Uh, well, hello. Uh, the thing was that uh, Todd came, uh, first Todd sent me the script, and I liked the script because after I have done Baccarat and the Painted Bird playing an evil person in both films, it was for me a kind of a very nice idea to do this. I mean, not nice, a good idea. Uh, and then Todd came to visit me and uh, we talked about it. He told me all the story about because he uh, had met Pat, the real Pat, and told, told me about, I never have been in Ohio, about the town. And uh, then we did a little crowdfunding, successful. And then I went down there to start the movie. We shot basically chronological. I wanted to start in the retirement home, being this old man, uh, sad and folding little, paper towels just because to do something because he was so flamboyant when he was in that town everybody knew him when he went down the street in very bright suits and a strange head and waving having rings everywhere so kind of uh, I liked it and I had seen Liberace once and Liberace had on each finger a ring and he went to the audience before he played and he said, he put his hands up like that and he said to the audience, you paid for it. <laughs> and I, I, like, I like the rings and of course then I like to, uh, it was amazing when I heard that Linda Evans is playing the part because I'm doing everything for her. It is like my whole going back, accept, accepting the money, going to the town, and I go and it has all changed. It has all changed where I go. And then finally I decide to do it and I do it. So there wasn't, there wasn't anything acting wise to get into it because it was like, uh, Lars von Trier always says to the actors, don't act. I didn't act. I was an old man lying there, folding, smoking more cigarette, a special cigarette. I had to learn how to hold, hold the cigarette because Todd showed me. And that was, that was basically uh, my preparation. My preparation came, we didn't rehearse. I mean, of course, we rehearsed for the camera that we had to go from there to there. But I, uh, emotion, we did not uh, rehearse. It, it just came. It was a, because it was a very good script. There was no, I don't like it. Can we do it that way? That was never, never a question. Do you feel like films like this are, are most important when we're coming out of the pandemic now? These more lighthearted films? Do you think we're going to see you be in more of these kinds of things? And how important are these kinds of films going forward? Well, I hope you see that what we said in the interviews before, we did a lot of interviews today, is I can't wait to see it on the big screen. <laughs> I don't want to see myself in, in a corner and then I go and get a water and go back, continue. I want to be taken in. And uh, I mean, I said to Todd, if uh, it's not coming soon to the cinema, I will rent the biggest cinema in Palm Springs, now everything open, and invite Linda and all the friends uh, and Todd to come here and be having a party and see it on a big screen. I think a film, there is a reason why a lot of films, if you see, if you see the nomination for the Oscar, is amazing the films, you know, and uh, Frances McDormand is amazing. She's not acting. Frances must have lived in that container for a couple of days. You cannot go step out of uh, your trailer uh, and put the clothes on and go, I know. It's, I think that's real. That because 
this uh, uh, virus is so strong and uh, amazing, the bad and all people died. It's amazing. So the, the people, it's a real to see real films. You don't want to see now Superman. Uh, you want to see something real. And that is the situation of today. When you know, when I saw uh, Francis, uh, Francis McDormand film, that I said, wow, what a great acting, because she didn't act. You never had the feeling, I do something, she cut her hair like that. You never had the feeling, there you have a star. And I think that people, for a while, it is not finished, for a while, they will see films like that. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, our next question comes from Kevin. Hi there. I really loved the film. Hi, I, Kevin. Hello, how are you? Hey, um, how are my you? cat is also joining us. <laughs> um, I'm curious to know, um, for, for all of you, everyone who's in the film and directed the film, part of the film, what was the most challenging shot or scene for you and why? It's easy. For me, it's easy. The, the final scene with Linda because the whole film, I'm doing this for that scene. I, I say, no, I, uh, I agree being an old man folding little paper towels and, you know, eat bad food and smoke a cigarette with a lady who don't talk and touch her hair. And then I decided and I go on a trip. And the trip, the final moment of the trip is that I do the hair and that was, of course, what I was doing the whole film, uh, the, the voyage went there. One of the most challenging, um, this is kind of funny, but um, one of the most challenging uh, scenes was the scene when Pat um, does jump rope with the kids, you know? And um, it wasn't because of, it, it was because like, we literally, it was such a low budget that sometimes we were literally stealing locations, you know? So we went and got set up at this great abandoned factory um, and got, you know, got the camera, everything all set up. And like, all of a sudden this guy like shows up in the car, like, what are you, you know, what are you doing here? Get the hell out of here. Which was, which was the only problem we had in the whole shoot with that because, uh, Otherwise, my my hometown, like everybody was so cooperative, but for some reason, this guy, I don't know what his deal was. But um, so we literally had to like run off, you know, he chased us off and we had to um, shoot, you know, we just had like kind of a backup idea and we just showed up there and set up and shot that whole jump rope scene in like 20 minutes, you know, so um so that <laughs> that but it was so fun it's it's almost like fun to work like that you know because you just feel really like alive and like it like you're in this reality kind of like udo was saying um that that in a way was the most challenging scene to get in the can you know but my two nieces were in the scene and um actually shooting it once we got started was really was really awesome i love that scene that was a scene that almost got cut out of the film. Um, uh, in early early screenings, we had like the the song wasn't right. People, we had like yeah, we had a different song tempt in, and people were like, "What's up with that?" You know. But I always knew that that we needed that moment, you know, of just like jo joy, you know. Reality. Yeah. I also like to see Miss Jennifer because. I am a big fan of hers when I see two bad girls or two broke girls and her entrance in each episode, amazing. So that was also a moment when I went to the hairdresser salon and she took everything away from me. So there was also a, a moment, there's so many moments in the film which are very little, there doesn't, it means more when you know the story. When you don't know the story, you, you don't follow that easy. So I think there's a lot of amazing, funny moments also in, in the film. Little ones, that's good. Our next question comes from Robert. 
Hey, Todd, I was just wondering, did you ever think that maybe you were going to hold on to this film for maybe a 2022 release? Or did 2021 really just, it, it feels like a, a movie of right now when you wanted to get it out there as quick as you could? Um, yeah, we did think about, we did think about it, but, but it, we had shot it, you know, before the pandemic uh, a while back and, you know, we just didn't, I don't know. We just can't hold on to something forever. I, I also think that it's gonna like, you know, it's unfortunate that the the like South by it's it's playing virtually, which in a way makes it accessible to more people. You know, so that that's cool in a, in a way. But um, I do I have hope that um, it's gonna have this really good timing where like maybe just as the world you know starts like coming back to life. Um, that we will start playing festivals um, in, in person. And a couple of people have pointed out to me something that I didn't even really think about, which is that, like I've had three people tell me that when Udo goes to the club and starts dancing, that they start crying, you know? And, and that there, there's something about um, this man, you know, his, the, Udo's character is trapped inside, you know? It's very, like, you can't even see out the window. You know, it's just very like, very pandemic locked down, you know? And here's the moment where he wakes up and gets out and goes on a journey, you know? Just like we're all gonna do together soon, I hope, you know? So I think that there's, I think it's a really good timing actually now. I think yeah. now is like the time. I agree. Yeah. We have an additional question from Kevin. I'm just kind of curious to know what inspired you to write this story. And, um, you know, I kind of understand where you're coming from with wanting to show it theatrically, but also, you know, the ability to reach a broader audience digitally. I personally don't think we would have the Oscar nominations this year that we have, if not for the pandemic and more people getting to see smaller films. So I'm curious to know for people who are going to see this interview online, where's the film going to go next? Is it going to a festival? Is it going digitally? Is it going to Palm Springs for private screening at Udu's house? You know, <laughs> like, I would love, love to know what the next plan is, because I'm sure people are really interested in this film, because um, it, it's really different and really interesting and funny and lighthearted. Thank you. Um, I, yeah, I mean, fingers crossed that, um, you know, I, I can't really say at the moment, but, um, but hopefully there'll be some news on that front soonish. But I, we really would, uh, it, I think it'll definitely continue to play festivals um, and um, hopefully we'll have a good uh, international premiere somewhere. Um, and, and hopefully we'll play in-person festivals and, you know, and we'll, yeah, we, we would really love it to come out in the theater, you know? Yes. So, um, so, um, yes. So we can really see those eyes, you know, like yeah. you on a 50 foot screen, you know? Yeah, oh, and, no. uh, <laughs> more. Uh, Kevin, <laughs> look here, Kevin, come here. Look, come here, come up, come here. Look, say hello to Kevin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yes, on the big screen. Yeah. Stay please, tuned. Please. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.